I think it's pretty clear that I'm not Ruthie Siders. <laughs> uh, Ruthie went to bed last night with a bad cough, woke up with it this morning, and uh, just decided it was best for her to stay home. So uh, I am pinch hitting or pinch preaching for her tonight. I love Thanksgiving. I love the Macy's Parade. I love football. I love dinner with all the trimmings. In fact, it was really hard to be here today to try to work because I smelled turkey and stuffing cooking in the kitchen all day. I just couldn't wait to get some. And then, of course, there's the leftovers. I love the leftovers. In fact, on Thanksgiving evening, I can't wait until I can pull some of that turkey out of the fridge, and make a sandwich with some stuffing and cranberry sauce, and sit there and enjoy it. We ought to just go and do that now. What do you think? That sounds pretty good. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> I'm guessing that you each have different traditions in your families. Thanksgiving was always a special time for my family and me to celebrate together. No one had to work. We could laugh, we could tell stories, and it was just special to be together as a family. As I grew up, there were certain protocols that we needed to follow. We would celebrate either in our home or in my grandparents' home who lived nearby. And before we'd go, we'd watch a little bit of the parade, and then as my brother and I got older, we went to the Thanksgiving Day football game in our town. It was a high school football game between Westfield and Plainfield. It was the game of the fall. You didn't miss. And when we came home, there was a house full of food, the same smells that you smelled tonight when you came in. But before we ate, we needed to change our clothes. Yes, there was a dress code. It wasn't a jacket and tie kind of dress code, but it wasn't time to be sloppy either. We had to wear nice clothes, shirt tails tucked in, no sneakers, nice shoes, no jeans. We all knew what was expected. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, speaks of a dress code for those who follow Jesus Christ. He makes clear what is expected. So I invite you this evening to follow along as I read from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Listen to God's word. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude from your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is God's Word, and I believe that God always blesses the reading and the hearing of His Holy Word. Will you pray with me? Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together would be acceptable to You. For You are the very Lord of our lives, our Rock and our Redeemer. You are the one who gives us life. You are the one who encourages us and strengthens us. You are the one who speaks 
afresh to us. And so we ask that you would do that this evening, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we would hear your word afresh, that we would not hear it only, that we would take it to heart and put it into practice because you are our Lord. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. In this passage, Paul speaks about clothes that meet the dress code. Paul, in speaking to the Colossians, describes them with the words chosen, holy, and dearly loved. These are people who have been chosen by the God of all creation to be the object of his love. These are people who have been made holy by God, who chose them and who loves them. To be holy is to be different from the normal. To be holy means to be set apart, not something that the Colossians could do on their own power, but being set apart was the work that God did on their behalf making them holy. Not only does God see them as chosen, holy, and loved, He sees us as people who have responded to His love in Christ the same way. As people who are chosen, holy, and beloved, we are called to clothe ourselves with clothes that fit who we are. Clothes that fit the dress code. Those clothes are mentioned, and the qualities of those clothes form and shape our character. Look at the words that Paul uses. Compassion, a quality that has to do with showing passion in our care for others, even mercy. Kindness, a quality that shows a sympathy being thoughtful and gentle. Humility. Humility is a tricky thing, you know. Just when we think we have it, then we don't. Rick Warren, from the pastor of the Saddleback Church in Southern California, writes in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, about humility. And in it, he says this, Humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Interesting point. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Paul goes on to say meekness, this quality of quiet strength which doesn't resent adversity but is able to stand in the midst of it. Patience, a quality of showing restraint in the face of opposition. One of the items of the dress code includes something that we don't often speak about. Forbearance, or bearing with one another. In our culture, we hear about a lot about tolerance. But I think tolerance and forbearance are very different things. Tolerance is that that the way that we uh, allow or put up with or permit something to happen. It may well be something we don't like, but we're tolerant. We let it happen, even though we disapprove. But forbearance is something very different. It's not merely putting up with or allowing someone to have a different thought. Forbearance exercises patience, really realizing that people with good intentions and good character may differ and may simply agree to disagree. According to Paul, bearing with one another includes forgiveness. Forgiveness is mentioned three times in this passage. Did you see that? Forgiveness has to do with our character. Forgiveness has to do with our life together. Henry Nouwen said that confession and forgiveness are the concrete forms in which sinful people love one another. It's interesting, as our daughters were growing up, 
we taught them a bit about forgiveness. You know how it is when uh, someone will come up to us and say, oh, I apologize, I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry if I hurt you, and our response is, that's okay. Is it really okay? Is it really okay that we hurt someone? Is it really okay that we offend someone? I think Paul gives us the words that we need to express, to forgive. To forgive means that we're not holding anything against that other person. Even though we may have been hurt, we speak words of forgiveness. So we taught this to our daughters. And early on, when I was working with college students and we were living in New York State, we had a Christmas party at our house. And one of the students did something that made one of our daughters upset. I don't remember whether it was Becca or Anna. It was one of them. And they came running into the kitchen and were in tears. And I said, well, what's the matter? Well, I did such and so, and I, I asked for forgiveness, and the student said, it's okay. We had taught them that you offer forgiveness, that you use words of forgiveness, and that hadn't happened. Even at an early age, it's easy for children to understand that. Forgiveness is a major part of what we need to do in living out our Christian life. Then Paul goes on to say that love is this garment which is to be put on over all these others. It holds all these parts together. Love guides each of these other parts that form our character. The dress code that Paul lays out for us is quite clear. What would it be like for you to follow this dress code of character as you celebrate Thanksgiving? What would it be like as you travel in the car? What would it be like in the family room or in the kitchen? What would it be like around the table? Be clothed with character. But there's more here. There are convictions that meet the dress code. The first conviction is to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. I don't know about you, but the peace of Christ has not always been a top priority around the Thanksgiving tables at which I've sat. I've had the opportunity to be around about 50 different tables on Thanksgiving. A lot of them with family members, but a lot of them with others. Usually, but not always, when guests are present, we're on our best behavior, especially when you don't know other people well. But with extended family, that's not always the case. I truly believe some words that a mentor of mine spoke to me years ago. He said that a family is a coalition of sinners who will be themselves. Think about that for a minute. Think about your family. A family is a coalition of sinners who will be themselves. Isn't that true? We're going to be ourselves around that table. We feel comfortable enough to let our guard down, and we're going to be who we are. I've seen brothers and sisters agitate each other to the point that one of them leaves the table or refuses to speak to another. I've seen adult siblings disrespect one another openly. And I've seen parents try, sometimes successfully and sometimes unsuccessfully, to keep the peace. But here is my question. What would happen if we allowed the peace of Christ to rule in our hearts? The first conviction is to allow the peace of Christ to rule in our hearts. The second is like the first, to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Eugene Peterson in the message translates it this way, let the gospel have the run of the house. What a great opportunity, what a great picture of allowing the gospel to have its way in us 
to mold us and shape us to be the people that God would desire us to be. You see, I'm convinced that the Word of God can and will do the work of God in our lives. But we've got to open the Word of God and read it and be willing to submit ourselves to it. I'm convinced that God's Word can mold us, shape us, form us, reform us, and transform us. That's what I understand Paul to mean by these words. So what would it look like for you to follow this dress code of convictions as you celebrate Thanksgiving? What would it be like as you travel in the car? What would it be like as you gather in the family room or in the kitchen? What would it be like as you gather around the table? I encourage you to be clothed with character and conviction. Now, this dress code that Paul speaks of is all-inclusive. In verse 17, Paul sums up his philosophy or the dress code for Christian living. For he says, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If we cannot do something in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to the Father through him, then we probably shouldn't be engaging in those words or actions. These are hard words, but they're good words against which to measure our lives. Living by this all-inclusive dress code is not easy, but it is possible. It is made possible by God through the person of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not something we can do on our own, but God is able to work in us and through us, and for that, we can be grateful and we can be thankful. And so what would it look like for us to follow this all-inclusive dress code this Thanksgiving? It's not about wearing jackets and ties or dresses. It's not about not wearing jeans or necessarily tucking in our shirts. It's about being molded and shaped by the God who loves us, the God who loved us enough to send his son to die for us and to rise again that we might have new life. So be clothed with character and conviction for the sake of thanksgiving. What dress code will you follow this Thanksgiving? No matter where it may be, no matter who you might be with, be clothed with character, be clothed with conviction, all for the thank sake of thanksgiving to Almighty God. May it be so. Amen.